In President Obama's memoir, A Promised Land, he describes being at Buchenwald, one of the largest of the Nazis' concentration camps. It was in June of 2009. He was there with the German Chancellor Angela Merkel and also with the great Elie Wiesel, the Nobel laureate, scholar, and teacher to the world. They were there together to acknowledge both the horror that occurred there and also the camp's liberation in 1945. After the event, Wiesel turned to Obama and Merkel and said, I thank you two for shining a light here. Friends, today we join Christians throughout the world to celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany, or what the Eastern churches call Theophany, both coming from the Greek, meaning manifestation or appearance. The day is full of narratives and images from both the Old and New Testaments, Isaiah's hymnody, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and St. Matthew's story of the Magi, who were asked to foretell the future and to interpret dreams. Remember that St. Matthew is writing to a Jewish audience to tell of a Messiah who is both a fulfillment of their faith and, this is really key, a symbol of God's radical openness to all people. The Magi, who are Gentiles, become members of the same body, co-partners in the promise of Christ Jesus through the gospel. And we read about this universality in the letter to the Galatians about 30 years before St. Matthew was writing. Today's a grand feast to celebrate God's power to shine light in every place and through and to every person. St. Matthew reminds Christian disciples like you and me to work continually against drawing lines of division and to expect that when we do draw those lines, that God's powerful mercy is likely to wash them away. As we look toward 2022, despite the availability of vaccines, we are affected still by what feels like an unending pandemic. Jesus Christ's light is manifest today, and we join him to bear that light so that all might see and be blessed with hope and friendship. This past year, Wiesel was honored posthumously at the National Cathedral because his carved bust was dedicated on the cathedral's human rights porch. Mrs. Wiesel was there and she said this, Like millions of European Jews, Elie suffered unimaginable horrors, but he responded to that suffering by devoting his life to writing, teaching, and above all else, as a moral leader and tireless advocate for our common humanity. Friends, it is God's great delight to lead us on the pathway of the Magi, to give us the power and the will to shine the light. A happy and a holy epiphany to you.